everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the fifth lesson in theory of flight. We're going to be talking about flight controls. Let's begin with uh, discussing the different types of axes on the aircraft and the planes of movement. First off, we'll talk about the lateral axis. The lateral axis runs from wingtip to wingtip. Movement about the lateral axis is called pitch, so nose up and nose down and we use the elevators on the horizontal stabilizer to control pitch. Secondly, we have the longitudinal axis. The longitudinal axis is from the nose of the aircraft to the tail of the aircraft. The movement about the longitudinal axis is called roll. So rolling to the left, rolling to the right and we use our ailerons that are the control surfaces on the wings to control roll last we have Lee, we have the vertical axis this is also referred to as the normal axis so the axis that runs from top to bottom of the aircraft movement about the vertical axis is called yaw so yawing left yawing right and we use the rudder on the vertical stabilizer of the aircraft to control yaw Let's talk about the function of the control. The elevator, which is located on the horizontal stabilizer on the tail, pitches the aircraft up and down. When we pull back on the yoke, the elevator moves up, forcing the tail down, which forces the nose up. The ailerons control roll to banked attitudes. If we move the yoke or the stick to the left, the left aileron goes up, the right aileron goes down, the aircraft will roll to the left. For the rudder, they are controlled by the rudder pedals. If we push the left rudder pedal, the rudder will go to the left, the tail will go to the right, which forces the nose left. There is a relationship between roll and yaw. If the aircraft yaw, it induces a roll. The reason it does this is because in a yaw, the outside wing moves faster than the inside wing. This creates more lift on the outside wing, raising that wing up and inducing a roll. Higher speed, more lift equals roll. When using the ailerons, you can run into a phenomenon called aileron drag. This occurs when the downgoing aileron has higher drag than the upgoing aileron. So what happens, let's say we want to roll to the left, we want to do a left turn, we move the yoke or the stick to the left the right aileron goes down and has more drag because it's in more of the airflow than the left one and so the plane will resist the turn to the left and potentially even yaw to the right this is also called or this is called adverse yaw when the yaw goes in the direction that is opposite to the roll input. This is the reason why we require the use of rudder to keep the turn coordinated. This phenomenon is very pronounced on float planes that have a significant area forward of the center of gravity. That area forward is the float, and so that means that the vertical stabilizer is less effective than it would be on a wheel airplane. There are a number of static and dynamic control balances that are designed in aircraft. Controls are typically balanced in order to ease the control forces and reduce flutter. For example, we might have mass balances. On your walk around in your Cessna 172, your instructor will have probably pointed out, if you look at the ailerons, you see these things right here. These are heavy weights and they increase the weight of that aileron and prevent flutter at high speed. Another example right here, that is a mass balance. It increases the mass, preventing flutter. You can also have dynamic balances. Let's look on the right on the Cessna elevator. Okay, not only is there a weight right in the front there to reduce flutter, but there is also a horn balance. And what this does is it reduces the control force required to move the elevator. If you think about how much force you would have to apply typically to move a big plate of metal in an airfoil, it would be quite a bit. However, with this horn balance, it 
provides force in the opposite direction, making movement easier. Lastly, on the cetabria, we have these things called aileron spades down here. These are another type of dynamic balance that are incorporated on ailerons. And similar to the horn balance, they make movement of the ailerons easier, so less control forces when you want to roll the airplane. This is especially important in this type of aircraft. The Citabria, I believe that is, could be a decathlon, but that's an aerobatic, an introductory aerobatic aircraft. And so when you want to roll the airplane, you don't want to have to use a mass amount of force to roll that airplane. And when I'm talking about rolling in the aerobatic context, I'm talking about going upside down. Let's talk about uh, trim and trimming devices. So when we're flying often, we may have to apply a certain amount of control force on, on a given control surface. Now, having to use that muscle and holding that control force then for a long period of time would obviously become quite fatiguing. So aircraft uh, designers have incorporated what are, is called uh, trim on the aircraft. And so you don't have to hold that control force in. The first trim we're gonna talk about is a fixed trim tab. You can see on the Cessna 172, the rudder has a fixed trim tab. This cannot be adjusted in flight. It is adjusted on the ground by an aircraft maintenance engineer in response to a pilot complaint. So let's say you are flying and you say, geez, this airplane always requires right rudder to keep straight. Well, the aircraft maintenance engineer can adjust that uh, trim, uh, that fixed trim tab, maybe move it a bit to the left, forces the rudder to the right, and so it should make a bit less, you might need a bit less force when flying the aircraft. Also, you can have an adjustable trim tab. So the Cessna 172 and Cessna 150 has adjustable elevator trim. You see this right here. This is the trim tab on the elevator, and it is controlled by this wheel right here. You move that wheel to move that trim tab. So let's say you're in a climb. You don't want to just be holding the controls uh, yoke back the whole time using all your muscle. That, that's rather painful. So what you do is you uh, hold the control stick in place in the, in the proper nose up attitude and then you trim the uh, elevator until you don't need to apply a control force anymore. Lastly, uh, Aircraft can be designed with an adjustable stabilizer where the whole, the whole entire horizontal stabilizer moves up and down to maintain trim. And this is done by a jack screw and typically a crank, as you can see here. This is, I believe, in a Piper Cub or Super Cub has an adjustable stabilizer. 737, a Boeing 737 actually also has an adjustable stabilizer for trim. So you can see here this mechanism. Uh, here you crank the nose up by this cable. This cable comes here, right here, and you can see this pulley. And then this jack screw right here moves this whole mechanism up and down. And then you can see here, here's the front tube for the horizontal stabilizer. It moves it up and down. Quick review of flight controls. The lateral axis is controlled by the ailerons. The longitudinal axis controlled by the elevator and the vertical axis controlled by the rudder. A yaw will induce a roll. Adverse yaw is caused by aileron drag and requires rudder to keep the turn coordinated. Control balances reduce or actually increase control forces in some certain circumstances. A trim device eliminates control forces in a given position. An aircraft requires right rudder to maintain coordinated flight. Which direction should the tab be moved? So remember, we're pushing the right rudder, meaning the rudder goes to the right. And so if we want to force that rudder to the right, we want to move the trim tab on the rudder to the left. So that would make A, we move the trim tab to the left to move the rudder to the right, the correct answer. A static balance falls off of a control surface. What is the likely effect? So if you recall, a static balance, uh, the purpose of it is to increase the weight of a control surface to reduce flutter. That could lead to possible loss of control. So the correct answer C, control flutter leading to possible loss of control. 
That concludes this lesson on flight controls. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in our next lesson.